books to page 17, class. Today's topic is the great Roman leader, Julius Caesar. Caesar, who ruled Rome around 50 BC, was a general in the Roman legions. For 10 years before coming to power at the ripe old age of 30, Caesar conquered Rome's most dangerous enemies. Conquer Earth. You are powerless against us. Today, Caesar is considered the father of the Roman Empire. Oh, yeah! Since you have such a strong opinion, Mona, perhaps you'd like to tell us what you know about Julius Caesar. Um, didn't they name a month after him? Well, that's right, Mona. July. And you'll all have a chance to learn more at a special historical presentation this weekend. The Great Waldo presents History on Ice, a historical ice show extravaganza. These brochures will grant each of you free admission. In return, you will all be required to submit a report on one of the historical <laughs> figures featured in the show. Julius Caesar, Marie Antoinette, Buffalo Bill. The great Waldo and his wonderful time machine will bring some of the greatest figures in world history right into your own backyard. Oh, ow, ow! Watch where you're going, mister! You okay, Charlie? <laughs> oh, pardon me. Have you seen a gentleman in a toga pass by? Oh, thank you kindly. Julius, come back! Julius? Hey, that must have been the great Waldo. He looks just like this picture. And that toga guy must have been Julius Caesar. He was in an awful hurry. Guess they didn't have any manners in ancient Rome. I'm gonna put that in my report. Oh, yeah, the report. Do you guys want to meet at the library tomorrow? Good idea. I wonder if they have a section on time travel. The do-it-yourselfers time machine from your garage to ancient Greece in five easy steps. <laughs> How amusing. No, 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 that would never work. Do you know something about time travel? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. My name is Albert Einstein. I'm sure you've heard of me. Well, in my day, I was a pretty famous scientist. I uncovered the secrets of time and space. Neat! I'm Mona, and these are my friends Charlie and Lily. Do you know anything about the Great Waldo's time machine? The Great Waldo is nothing but a scoundrel. He stole all of my best ideas and used them to... Al! Al, I've been looking for you everywhere. You're late for rehearsal. Oh, please, couldn't I stay a bit longer? I miss my books. You and your books. You need to practice your double axle. Come on! What goes up must come down! What goes up must come down! <laughs> Poor Al. Sure didn't like Waldo much. He seemed to be afraid of him. That stuff he said is right here in this book. That Al guy thinks he's Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century. What if he is? Let's go find out. This Waldo and his time machine are gonna need a little investigation. <laughs> about figure skating, but they don't look very good. They're terrible. It's all starting to make sense. They're terrible because they're not figure skaters. They're real historical figures. And the diabolical Waldo has somehow traveled into the past and stolen them from their real time periods. Now they're forced to skate in his show. Stop, stop, stop. 
Stop! That was terrible! Al, what am I gonna do with you? You are such a klutz! A klutz? But, but, but these working conditions are terrible! You, you make us work non-stop. You don't respect us, and we never get to have any fun. We miss our homes, and we need a break. And Julius' skates are too tight. I don't have time for this. I have a show to put on, and I still have to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Round up the opening act. We've got to rescue those great men and women of history. And return them to their own time periods. Shh, he's back. Come on, get a move on. Oh, no, I forgot Shakespeare. Go ahead without me. If we could just find Waldo's time machine, we could take everybody back. What was it Einstein said? What goes up must come down. Here he comes again. What goes up must come down. That's it! The elevator! I bet he rewired the elevator into a time machine. Come on! smile from you, Lisa. Lisa, please, one smile. Say no! That's it, Lisa, beautiful. Sorry, you better hurry, Mona. Mona, I'm gonna give you top feeling. Just gonna sneak everybody away from Waldo and... Out, out, out! This area is off limits to nosy children. He may have stopped us this time, but he's no match for Mona the Vampire. Tonight will be Great Waldo's last show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to your epic the first ever caveman on skates, the Iceman Cometh! performers prepare for act two, I'd be happy to answer questions from the audience. Come on, now's our chance. Dad, I gotta go to the little vampire's room. Okay, sweetie, but don't be gone long. You don't want to miss Shakespeare's to skate or not to skate. Ladies and gentlemen, lend me your eyes. Look now upon the amazing Renoir brothers and accompanying them on the high wire. Sorry, little girl. We can't sign autographs right now. Come back later, okay? No, listen! Ahem. Listen, friends! Romans, cavemen! I am Mona the Vampire, and I have come to rescue you from your servitude to Waldo. Uh -huh. Mona? Who is this Mona? Is Mona? Come on. You don't have to be treated this way. It's time to stand up for yourselves! The little girl's right. It's time to walk. Going down in history. Whoops. Looks like we overshot the caveman age and landed in the Jurassic period by mistake. Thank you, Mona. It will be a thrill to see how my theories are being exploited in the 25th century. Mission accomplished. I can't find any of my performers, and I have a feeling you middling kids have something to do with that. They're not performers. They're great historic figures, and we returned them to where they belong. Well, I'm going to return you to the beginning of time! Or not. And so. Or not. And so. Oh, 
no, not here. Anywhere but here. Mother will be so mad. I'm a century past my curfew. Waldo, is that you? Your supper is getting cold. Come here this instant. <sighs> Coming, Mother. There you kids are. I was beginning to worry. I've got bad news. They've canceled the rest of the show due to technical difficulties. And I was really looking forward to that Shakespeare number. Officer told my dad that Waldo guy left town without paying his bill. Settle down, class. It's not nice to gossip. Open your books to page 73, where you'll find a portrait painted by the great Leonardo da Vinci. Does anyone know the name of its subject? The Mona Lisa. I don't have time to make you breakfast this morning. Doing fine, Mom. Honey, we're going to be late for our exercise class. Ready. Dad, you're still wearing your pajama bottoms. Back in a flash. We'll be back this afternoon, sweetie. Are you going out? Yep, Charlie and Lily and I joined the Town Beautiful Drive. We're polishing the Park Memorial this afternoon. Got my pants, let's go. Bye, sweetheart. What's the point of telling time if you never have enough of it? Not only does it tell time, but it has a cool alarm. Oh, look! What is it? Wow, oh. pretty! Hey, you there. Give me back my watch. We found it in the grass. Uh, it's a very delicate watch. You only break it. Don't mind Mr. Kroner. He's a bit of an old-fashioned artisan, but he's a godsend. What does that mean? It means that the new town clock stopped working last night, and Mr. Kroner just happened to come by and offered to fix it for free. Well, that was lucky. Oh, my. I'm going to be late for the town council meeting. I really appreciate your help, children. Everybody's always late. harder than polishing my mom's silverware. Let's break for lunch. What do all these lines mean? It's a sundial. You can tell time by the pointer shadow. X and two bars means 10 plus two, 12. It must be about noon then. Is that the town clock? Since when does it have a bell? Maybe Mr. Croner added it. strikes at noon. I guess it still needs adjustments. Snuck! My grape soda's gone flat. It was fine when I opened it. My hat! Where's my hat? <gasps> my wallet! Oh. Where's my cane? Someone took my lunchbox! You probably left it at home. No way! I had Yahoo cakes! I never forget those. Charlie, are sundials accurate? Unless you knock them out of whack. Well, something's out of whack. This says it's now one o'clock. It was the weirdest thing. An eerie blue light. I saw it too. It looked like that. It's the staircase to the clock. Hello? Who let you kids in here? <gasps> We were just looking for... You were snooping is what? Don't let me catch you here again. He was eating a Yahoo cake, just like mine. Something's not right here. Wow, 
dollars if you can guess the exact number of jelly beans in the jar. I know a kid who has a system. He figures out the volume of one bean and the volume of the jar. And noon already? How come it only rings at noon? Maybe it still needs adjustments. It's the same blue light we saw yesterday. Eleven strikes. Just like yesterday. Can ice cream melt so fast? Well, at least nothing's gone missing this time. My jelly beans! Help, police! Who walks off with that many jelly beans? And so quickly. Someone who's a little careless. Looks like Mr. Corner's got a sweet tooth. We lost another hour again. Hmm. Strange things have happened at this exact time two days in a row. But tomorrow, we'll be ready. <laughs> Alpha to Omega. Alpha to Omega. Anything to report? Over. Am I supposed to be Omega? You have to end each transmission with over. Over. Oh, right. Nothing yet. Over, over. No, just one over. Roger that. Roger? This is Charlie, Mona. Over, over. We've been here almost an hour. I don't think anyone's gonna show. Maybe we were wrong. But I don't understand. My vampire senses have never let me down before. Truck, your way. Over, over. Repeat that, Omega. Over. I said Mr. Corner is coming this way. At least I think it's him. What do you mean? Is that his son? I don't know. Let's follow him. Ah! Hey, don't push! There's my lunchbox. to work. strikes to them. They didn't hear the last one. Everybody's frozen. Are they asleep? Not asleep. Ah! Just suspended in time. Where did you come from? Where's Mr. Croner? I'm Mr. Croner. You are? Suspending time isn't cheap, children. I have to pay with several years of my own to fuel the time machine whenever I use it. You stopped time twice before just so you could steal my lunch in a lousy jar of jelly beans? Oh, no. Those were just practice runs. But today is the real thing. Today, I take the armored truck that comes to the city bank every day at noon. And no one can stop me. I better put this where you can't get at it. Hey, don't you need that key to start time again? Huh. Consider yourselves lucky. Sneaking in here when you did made you immune to the effects of my time machine. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the rest of this town. When the timer runs out in an hour, your town will remain forever suspended. And I'll be long gone. Well, at least we solved the mystery of the flat soda, the sundial, and the melted ice cream. We were frozen like the others for an entire hour. But we're not now. We have to do something. Time is running out. Why, thank you. You're too kind. I hope a 
it as a full tank of gas, fellas. I'm going on a long trip. Rats! My feet don't reach the pedals. We're almost out of time, Mona. I think I figured out how to jam it, but I need something small. <laughs> Steal the money one bag at a time. It's not like I'm pressed for time. <laughs> ah, ah, no! I'm getting younger! Look outside! Pretty good for a watch I found in a cereal box. And then Officer Howcroft said that Mr. Croner's business was only a front for a father and son team of pickpockets. And that they probably took off when the armored car heist went wrong. Yeah, sure. Well, he was no clocksmith, that's for sure. The repairman they called in to fix the town clock said he made a real mess of things. Mr. Croner must be long gone by now. Do you think we'll ever hear from him again? I don't know. Who knows how breaking the time machine affected him? Oh, you poor thing. Lost your mommy, have you? Let's go see Officer Halcroft. He'll know what to do with you. My transgrifier will send you back where you came from, or my name isn't... Mona! Ah! You know, this stuff isn't any good to the Historical Society if it's smashed. We got a little carried away. Sorry. I'll make you sandwiches for lunch. Just try not to wake the dead. I have enough mouths to feed. Your mom was only joking about waking up the dead, right? Everyone knows the dead never sleep. In fact, they're probably watching us, right now! Stop it! Hey. Look what you did! You broke it! Hey, that's my great-great-uncle Morbus. He was one weird cookie. His eyes are so creepy. Not exactly historical society material. We'll call you in another hundred years if we need you, Uncle Morbus. Thirsty. Ah, better. Yeah! Yeah! Ah! Uncle Morbus! Excuse me. Do you have any idea what a hundred years of dust does to the nasal cavities? <laughs> Mom? Dad? Mona. It's incredibly rude to interrupt. I just remembered about, uh, the thing that I forgot. In the other room. You can't butt in if I cover all the windows and mirrors. But you woke me, Mona. And a hundred years is a long time to oversleep. Even on a Saturday. Go back where you came from! Ah, well, you see... That old frame is a little cramped for me. But if you like it so much, we can switch! I'm not supposed to watch TV past my bedtime! Say that! Cable! <laughs> I'm going to like it here. No! Go away! Uh, what a nightmare that was. 
was. <sighs> Dad, hurry. I have to use the bathroom. Dad? Daddy? You wouldn't believe the nightmare I had. Dad, too! Uncle Morbus, no! <laughs> That's no way to greet your Uncle Morris, Mona. I have an Uncle Morris? He's the guest speaker at the Historical Society dinner tomorrow. He's quite the expert on the town's history, you know. But he's just like in my dream. There's a picture in the attic, and I... S he arrived late last night, and he needs to rest. In the meantime, didn't you promise to take those old things to the Society? Here's the register your father requested, Lily. I think you'll find our town's history very interesting indeed. This year's exhibit will be the best one yet, thanks to loans from families like yours, Mona. And we're really looking forward to your uncle's speech. <gasps> A Thornton Pickard camera. And photographic plates, too. Are you okay, Mona? You look pale. It's that nightmare I had. I keep thinking it means something. It means that you have a creepy great-great-uncle, that's all. Anyone would have bad dreams after looking at that picture. But running into Uncle Morris this morning was like being face-to-face -face with that old photo. Well, of course, they're related. There's more to it than that. You should meet Uncle Morris. Then you'll see what I mean. Ah! Why don't you knock? What if he's still sleeping? My mom said not to wake him up. Say, didn't you close the trap door yesterday? Yeah, I did. The frame is missing! Hey, here it is. It must have fallen by accident. It's covered with dust. <sighs> <laughs> Hello? Is someone there? Uncle Morris? Maybe we should go down now. Good idea. Look here. The Historical Society's register says that your Uncle Morbus was an eccentric inventor who kept to himself and shunned sunlight. And here's Uncle Morris, only coming out at night. For two people separated by a hundred years, they sure have a lot in common. Oh, look at Uncle Morbus's last invention. Where have I seen that before? I think it's some sort of planetary model. It looks like it was built from scrap metal. It sure is ugly. I guess Uncle Morbus wasn't a very good inventor. Yes, well, look who braved sunlight for a change. His eyes are just like Uncle Morbus's. You were right. What do you think he's doing here? Studying the town's history, according to Mom. This is the chance I've been waiting for. I'll see you guys later. Hmm, that's strange. He's left the bedside light on in the middle of the day. <gasps> A wig? Why would Uncle Morris wear a wig? That's him! Because he's really your great-great-uncle Morbus! Imagine my embarrassment when I realized that I left without it. I can't risk being recognized by those annoying history buffs. Please, hand it over. Catch it if you can! <sighs> no! I guess you have no choice but to go back now. This is only a minor setback. I'm staying for good as soon as I make one final adjustment. I want to thank you and your family for keeping this safe. It took a while to find it in the mess upstairs. It's too late. We know everything about you now. I'll deal with your little friends later. As for you, nature abhors a vacuum. And there's the matter of a blank photo that needs filling up. I'll be sure to put you back where you found me. 
You'll see. It's not so bad once you get used to the dust. <laughs> Are you okay? You're paler than ever. I'm okay, for now, but we don't have much time. Look. It's true. You really are taking his place. There must be a way to reverse the process. I have a feeling things may get worse before they get better. Now we know what that key was for. Ah. <laughs> I'm glad you children are here, actually. An audience is fitting for this grand event. Why go through so much trouble for that piece of junk? There's more to it than meets the eye. You see, I've always been cursed with an excessive sensitivity to sunlight. I found a solution, but I was unable to implement it until now. Thanks to my dear grand-grandniece, I can finally vanquish my enemy, the sun! <laughs> it's broken! The planets are turning backwards! On the contrary, it's working as designed. <gasps> From now on, the world will remain in permanent dusk! And I can live! Not if I can help it! <laughs> it's too late what? for you, Mona. Without that picture of me, I don't exist in the past. And you have to take my place. Resistance is useless. I'll slip through your fingers like the sands of time. The Transcribifier! The what? Hurry! She's almost gone! I hope this still works. Say creep! Listen to this. Although the solar eclipse took everyone by surprise, it certainly made the historical society celebrations unique. They have no idea how unique. We barely escaped permanent twilight. What about Uncle Morris? My parents assume he left rather than face the humiliation of public speaking without his wig. They'd like to replace it, but he didn't leave a phone number. Of course, I know where to find him. That's not even a regulation-sized basketball. Sure it is. Or my name's not unscrupulous, Al. A good shot. This is your 23rd try. You sure you got the money to pay for this? Sure. My dad does. He's got lots of money. <sighs> Twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I wonder what that kid was doing in there. Come on, everyone. Let's go on a real scary ride. You like scary rides, don't you? Whoa, look how high up we are. This is scary. I can't look down. Ferris wheels are slow. And boring. Can we go on the Brain Masher next? Or the Spine Discombobulator? Or the Dimension Buster? Can we get some slushies? And some caramel corn? And some cotton candy. Hello, Hello Officer Howcroft. Hiya, kids. Hey, look at that. Whoa, he's creepy. This is only a life-size replica. The real live Funhouse Franklin is in there. The Fourth Dementia Funhouse. Do not go near the Fourth Dementia Funhouse or the Dimension Buster Ride. They're not 
for kids. Yeah, right. How do you know? My boss, unscrupulous Al, owns them. That's how I know. If Funhouse Franklin gets you into the fourth dementia, you will never get out. Oh, yeah? We're not afraid. Yes, we're afraid. Did you see how creepy that Funhouse Franklin looks? I've heard that the fourth dementia Funhouse has made some kids permanently demented. Let's eat. The Dimension Buster ride is more fun than riding the Brain Crusher. I'm gonna be sick. Wish this could go faster. This is the fastest ride ever made. As fast as the speed of light. Any faster, we're gonna break the space-time continuum. That's why it's called the Dimension Buster, and I think it's about to fall. This ride's closed for lunch. Come back in an hour. But we don't have an hour! We need to get on that ride now! Hmm. Listen, Mr. Al. I, uh... Is Unscrupulous your real name? Actually, it's my middle name. My real name is Dishonest. Right. So anyway, Mr. Al, you see, I lost my cat when we split the space-time continuum and made a leap into the fourth dementia. And we really have to get him back! Oh, your little kitty's lost in the fourth dementia. Why didn't you say so? Of course you can get on and look for him. Gee, thanks, Mr. Al. In an hour. But if you're that eager to visit the fourth dementia, why not check out the fourth dementia funhouse in the meantime? So you're saying there's some sort of temporal bridge connecting the Dimension Buster and the Fort Dementia Funhouse? Sort of an interstellar gateway? Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Come on, Lily. If Fang's trapped in the Fort Dementia Funhouse, then we have to go in. But we might get permanently demented. Fang would do it for us if we were trapped. Only five minutes before the Fort Dementia Funhouse closes. We have to hurry. Let's go. <laughs> Fang? Fang? Where are you? You're stuck in Funhouse Franklin's fourth dementia. <laughs> it's a maze. Which way do we take? All passages lead. Confusion and terror. <laughs> Let's go this way. Let's go that way. Fang, where are you? Fang? 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 Where are you?
defeated Funhouse Franklin and escaped the fourth dementia. You're Funhouse Franklin? Yeah, but I think I'm gonna quit. This part of the job is fun. I've done it for three summers. But I don't like helping unscrupulous Al cheat on the ball throw game. He cheats on the ball throw game? We cheat. My job is to put the stick through a small hole and poke out the balls that land in the basket. That's terrible. I feel really bad about it. And that's why I'm quitting. I wish I could somehow pay you back for the money you lost. It was my dad's money, but you could do me a favor. Sure, anything. How'd you do that? Hey, what's going on here? Hello? Hello? Just hand over that giant stuffed von Creepsulum, mister. An unscrupulous Al? I quit. I'm sick of this job. You can't quit. You're fired. Good luck finding someone else to run the fun house. Come on, kid. How about I give you a big raise? Okay, sure. But no more cheating on the ball throw game. Yeah, sure. There you kids are. We've been looking everywhere. about weird. I've seen some pretty weird things in this town, but this takes the cake. It's creepy beyond belief. You said it, Fang. We've battled a living mummy, matched wits with the boogeyman, even tussled with a yammering yam. But nothing beats the sheer horror of... Watching Angela dance. Ugh. I hate that band! Oh, Lawrence, pay attention. Do you want to learn the brainwaves dance or not? Well, actually, I'd rather... Okay, then. From the top. We like to move. We like to dance. So come along and take a chance. Swing, shake, and shout. Shout and sing.
Run along, everyone. You're late for class. But my stereo, Miss Gatto. My brainwaves tape. I'm afraid I'd better hang on to this until recess, Angela. Run along now. Ugh! It's gonna be the cinematic event of the year. You bet. I live for the Moon Monsters movie marathon. And this year is gonna be better than ever. They're giving out Thor prizes and everything. Settle down, class. Angela has a special announcement to make. Okay, Dave, you can bring it in now. Attention, everyone. I brought Dave here today because I'm getting rid of all my toys. Now that I'm a brain waver, I'm much too grown up to play with them. So I'm giving them away to the <laughs> less with it among you. Angela's giving stuff away? I don't get it. That'll be all, Dave. You can put the box down now. Dave? Dave, those are very expensive. It's okay, Mr. Moon Monster. We'll protect you and your planet from this horrible Zitzimi. Quick, Charlie, catch! I've got it! I've got it! Charlie, look out! Where are my headphones? Hey, give me my headphones! Thanks, Bones. Hey, get with it! Hey, get with it! Did George actually just thank you for knocking him over? That was very weird. Guess I owe it all to that dumb brainwave song. Hey, get with it! Hey, get with it! In Moon Monsters the Musical, what was the name of the giant race of singing aliens? Lily? Lily? Oh, hi, Mona. I can't believe you're listening to that dumb brainwave song. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. It kind of grows on you. My mom bought me the tape, and it came with this free trial size bottle of brainweaver shampoo. Shampoo, huh? Weird. Feast your eyes on this the big giant book of Moon Monster Trivia 10th Anniversary Edition. It's the perfect warm up to our movie marathon. This shampoo is supposed to make your hair turn out just like Alpha Waves. Don't you want to try it? Um, no thanks. Charlie's dying to have a look at my book, so I'll see you later. We're still meeting at my house, right? <sighs> hey, Charlie, wait till you see what I brought you. Not you, too. I thought you said they were dumb. Yeah, I did think that before. But check out this video. It's so cool. Not as cool as these. The latest in 3D technology for the special 3D presentation of Red Moon Monster Alert. Check out the bass player, Zero Wave. Charles, dear, it's a beautiful day. You shouldn't be wasting it cooped up inside. Could you go down to the Speedy Mart and pick up some things for me? See you, Mona. Don't forget, we're meeting at my house before the movie marathon. Batpack, check. Red Moon Monster 3D glasses, check. Green Moon Monster soda slurper. Uh, thanks, Fang, check. Hi, guys. Why haven't you changed into your Zatman and Princess Giant stuff? You'd better hurry. We don't want to miss the door prizes. The thing is, we're a bit tired of being Zatman and Princess Giant. It's just not that important to us anymore. So, we've decided to retire. Not important? What could be more important than fighting the forces of darkness so our fellow townsfolk can rest easy? Come on, Mona. Don't you think we're getting to be too old for that stuff? Maybe it's time to move on. I mean, being a brain waver, that's where it's at. You don't mean that. It's that dumb brainwave song. It's having a weird effect on people. It's the brainwaves are cool, Mona. Not weird. Come on, get with it. We've got to go get ready for the big brainwaves concert tonight. But we've been looking forward to the movie marathon all year. How can you guys do this to me? We're really sorry, Mona, but we just can't miss the brainwaves concert. Why don't you come with us? No way. 
We'll show them, Fang. We'll have an even better time at the movie marathon without them. One, please. <clears throat> okay, two, please. Say, where is everybody? Seems all the kids in town are going to that crazy Brainwaves concert. Oh, nobody appreciates the classics anymore. <laughs> Nice try, Fang. It's just not the same without Princess Giant and Zap Man. But, Doctor, how do I know if it's really true? What are the signs that the aliens have brainwashed me? The first symptom is a bizarre obsession with washing your hair. Did you get that, Mona? You should be writing this down. Charlie and Lily are in trouble and they need your help. You were too mad at them to notice the obvious signs of alien brainwashing. Unusual behavior, the repetition of an annoying saying, really clean hair. You're right. First Angela giving stuff away, then George being nice. Now Charlie and Lily? It's the brainwaves. They're alien brainwashers. I've got to stop them. You'd better hurry, Mona. <laughs> Check it out! I'm Zero Wave! I'm Alpha Wave! Hey, get with it! Strange behavior. Hey, get with it! The repetition of an annoying saying. Really clean hair! Oh, hi, Mona. Uh, thanks, I guess. We thought you'd be at the movie marathon. Oh, I was, but I had to leave. You guys need me. What I mean is, you guys are right. It's time to get with it. I want to be a brain waver. All right, way to go, Mona. We were hoping you'd come around, so we got you a t-shirt and this ticket to the concert. It's perfect. Are you sure you want to do this, sweetie? W what about the movie marathon? You've been looking forward to it all year. I know, Dad, but some things are more important than monster movies. and these special filter earplugs should help me find out just what these brainwashers are up to. with some good old-fashioned H2O! Uh. No babies allowed, Mona! Go home or get with it! Hey, get with it! That kid and her cat, we're a laughing stock. Our plans to enslave the human race have been ruined. You were right about the brainwaves, Mona. What a ripoff. I bet that's the last we'll see of them. Thanks to you, Fang. If you hadn't found a way to set off the sprinklers and rinse everybody's brains, I might have lost my two best pals forever. Settle down, class. Angela has another announcement to make. Okay, Dave, we're ready for you now. <clears throat> I'd like to announce that I'm offering any interested buyers a great deal on all this Brainwaver stuff. So my dad said we can have a sleepover this weekend and have a Moon Monster video marathon. Cool. Great. <laughs> What's so funny, vampire girl? <sighs> Nothing. I'm just glad to see everything's back to normal. Dave! Those are very expensive! Uh, what 
no world. Hi, Batman. I'll be right down. Yahoo! Hey! Hi. Are you ready for the ultimate vampire versus spaceman high flying aerobatics combat challenge? You bet. It's a perfect day for it. Nice and windy. Mona! Mona, I need you to. Oh, hi, Charlie. Hi, Mrs. Parker. Charlie and I are going over to the park for the Vampire Spaceman Challenge. See you later, Mom. Actually, Mona, I really need you to stay home this afternoon. Aunt Pat's coming over with little Melvin, and I was hoping you would keep him amused. Not Melvin the Monster! Please don't call him that, especially not in front of Aunt Pat. But he is a monster, Mom. You and Dad call him that all the time. Just yesterday, I heard Dad say, that Melvin sure is a monster. Hi, we're here. Hello. Well, look at you. Come in. Mona! Come on in and have some coffee, Pat. Guess the little Mona's monster likes you. Melvin. Right, Mona? That's right. And Charlie here has volunteered to help me. <laughs> okay, Melvin. How about we play Monster Checkers? No! How about a game of Space Blasters? No! Baseball? No! Super Ghoul's Trading Cards? No! <laughs> Moon Monster Puzzle? No! <laughs> to sit still for a while, I'll show you one of my most prized possessions. Story? Not just any story. This is the spine-tingling tale of Von Creepsula, king of the creepy vampires. <coughs> sit down and I'll tell you all about the time Zatman and I were pulled into this very comic book and forced to battle Von Creepsula on his own turf. It all started when I lent my comic book to Zatman here. I didn't mean to wreck your comic book. And he left it out in the rain, releasing the most villainous of vampires into our world. My most prized thing in the whole world. But by letting the ink run out of the comic book, you released Von Creeps. I tried to recapture the King of Super Creeps, but he was too strong. Lucky for me, that man came to the rescue and we forced Von Creepsula back into his comic book prison. But that's when he decided to take us along for the ride. Hang on, Mona! I've got you! Mona! I've got a snack down here for you kids. Wanna come and get it? In a sec, Mom! It's lime jelly treats. Oh, monster slime. Yummy, let's go. Story! Oh, don't worry. We made it out okay. And he's still trapped in here. I'll tell you all about it after our snack. was close.
at last. Free to roam the earth, leaving doom and destruction in my wake. You'll never catch me this time, little vampire girl. <laughs> This time. Not only have you ruined my most prized possession, you've released a dangerous master villain into our world. I've got to find Von Creepsula before he unleashes his anger on the whole town. Charlie, you keep an eye on Melvin. Wait! Let me battle Von Creepsula. Name any death defying mission you like. Just don't leave me with Melvin. Sorry, Charlie. This is a job for Mona the Vampire! Wait! Gotcha! <laughs> Melvin, come back! Okay, Von Creepsula, I'm ready for you. It's time to take a one-way trip back to Comicsville. <laughs> You can't hide from me, Von Creepy! Show yourself! Hello, Mona. Nice of you to join me. I'm just hanging around, mulling over my plans of doom and destruction. Sorry, the holiday's over. Time to go back where you belong. <laughs> oh, that old comic book trick won't work this time. I'm much stronger than I used to be. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> I've had lots of time to drain, cooped up in that comic. And now, at last, I have the chance to unleash my new powers on you! Uh, ah! It's your turn to be trapped inside this low-grade paper and wrapped in plastic. I banish you forever! No fair, four against one. Time to say goodbye. Don't forget to ride. Yeah, we went for weekend. He's gone. No. No, my lolly. No, but no. Get it down from there. Nobody can climb that high. Eh? Okay, Zap Man. Ready, everybody? Asking what he's done with me. Take the little monster away, please, please. Where is he? Untie me, and I'll help you find him. I promise I'll be good. Just please make him go away. <laughs> I guess I've got no choice but to trust you. Take the little monster away. Treasure chest was the portal out of the comic book world. Von Creepsula number nine. Vampiria escapes from the King Vampire's castle through the secret passage in the treasure chest. I must have missed that issue. Gee, will you look at the time? 
I'd better collect Melvin and get going. Mona, can you bring Melvin downstairs? That's funny. What could they be up to? Oh, isn't that cute? I guess Melvin must have really tuckered them out. Oh, what's this? Mama must have given this to him. How sweet. Super triple decker Neapolitan ice cream with sprinkles. And it all flies. I've heard Dr. Java makes a strawberry and banana power milkshake with a ketchup swirl. Now that's a specialty. Huh? Ah! This is terrible. What a lineup. We can always go to good old Mr. Hyde's. There's no lineup at his place, and he always gives me great old comic books. I'd rather wait an hour in line than eat one of Mr. Hyde's plain old vanilla floats. Mona, Charlie, Lily, I knew I could count on your loyalty. Not like all those other Fairweather customers abandoning me for some Dr. Java and his fancy ice creams. Um, yeah. Well, there's nothing like one of Mr. Hyde's vanilla floats. Right, Charlie? Uh, um, no, nothing like it. <laughs> at Dr. Java's. These ice cream floats don't even float. My perfect coffee. Ugh. Ugh. Mona, my favorite and most loyal customer, I have another little fun Cripsula comic for you. I found the comic among my ex-brother's belongings. You have a brother? An ex-brother? A long time ago, we used to operate an ice cream parlor together. Sure, he was great at scooping ice cream. And sure, he knew how to make a decent cup of coffee, but he had no table-side manner, no patience for the customers. It's too hot. Of course it's hot! It's coffee! It's supposed to be hot! I told him to be nicer to the customers. Then he told me my ice cream floats were boring and that the coffee I made was bitter. We had a big fight, and Marvin got so mad he took off. I haven't seen him in years. We should have gone to Dr. Java's. But we don't want good old Mr. Hyde to go out of business. If only my brother was still with me to help wage war against this Dr. Java. But Dr. Java will never steal all my customers, will he, kids? No, Mr. No, Hyde. Mr. Hyde. Um, no, Mr. Hyde. Let's see. You know how long I waited in line for that coffee. You might as well enjoy it. Hi, Miss Bryerson. Oh, hello, hello. Hi, you children. I've never seen Blitzy so vicious. Let's go see where this Dr. Jabba makes his ice cream. We won't buy any, we'll just look. <laughs> With this high octane lactic tocchino, there will be no stopping me. No one will be able to resist his high energy yumminess, and I will take over the world of coffee retail. <laughs> he looks like a mad scientist. Ah. <sighs> Perfect. Blitzy, get over here. What's gotten into you? Thought I saw someone back there. Fang? I don't 
get it. Blitzy's a dog, and Dr. Java is a human. So how can they have the same transforming condition? To my brother Marvin, with love. Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jabba? Wow, look at this, Fang. They're brothers. It's Dr. Jabba and Mr. Hyde, all right. Wow, Mr. Hyde doesn't even know it's his own brother who's stealing all his customers. Now, 1x plus 1x always equals 2x. Or so I thought, <laughs> until I dated Mr. Wrong, until we went to this fancy Italian restaurant. <laughs> but who would have known he was wearing a toupee? <laughs> and actually hated Italian food. Oh, he used his fingers to eat the scallopini. <laughs> What's with Miss Gatto? That super strong Dr. Java coffee is turning her into a jittery hyper freak. Mona, I will thank you not to interrupt me when I am lecturing the math class on my ex-boyfriends. My vampire senses are telling me that something dastardly is percolating at Dr. Java's. And my guess is a Sumatran Mocha Hyper Freaks blend. I think Zapman, Princess Joint, and Mona the Vampire better pay this Dr. Java a little visit. After we finish our homework. Ooh! You are dragging your dirty shoes over the floor I just mopped. I work long hours cleaning up after the likes of you. Scrub, wax, wax, scrub. No running in the halls. Are you looking for detentions? We're trapped. As principal, I can give detentions to anyone, anytime. Wax, scrub, wax, wax. This way. Good night, Bob. You too, Principal Shabley. Costume and meet me and Lily at Dr. Java's. I think this whole town is about to be hyper freakified. <laughs> Princess Giant, this is Hyper Freak City. All the adult Hyper Freaks are starting to surround us. Let's go. Down here. <laughs> This is what's transforming all the adults in town into jittery hyper freaks. Someone's coming. Ah, another excellent day of business thanks to you, my super percolator. No one can resist your rich aroma and full-bodied flavor and overwhelming power. Soon, everyone in the world will be a jittery hyper freak, and I will be king of the universe! Huh? I smell spies! Is that man too late to save his fellow Cape Crusaders? Charlie, hide! Uh. Down here! Uh. I smell something and I know it ain't coffee! Achoo! <laughs> Help, Mona! Go on, Fang, and remember, cats always land on their feet! <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to destroy his super percolator. No! Don't touch it! No! Blitzy! Get over here! My plans are ruined. My 
super percolator would have marked a new beginning for the world of coffee retail. I've lost my chance. No, you haven't. I have the perfect partnership opportunity for you. Marvin, is that you? You're Dr. Java. Arnold! My brother Arnold! It's so good to see you. You haven't changed a bit. I have a feeling things are going to be much better around here now. Dr. Java's and Mr. Hyde's Ice Cream Cafe. Wow, this is the best ice cream float I've ever tried. My brother Marvin always had a knack for making fancy ice cream dishes. And thanks to you kids, we're back together again after all that time. Between his ice creams and my coffee making, we're undefeatable. <laughs> At least the ice cream's great. Yeah, delicious. Oh no, the ogre wants to destroy the treaty. Quick, your sonic disruptor! To be continued? But Biff Boffo must deliver the peace treaty before war breaks out. The entire universe is at stake. Oh no, someone stole my money and replaced it with these IOUs. Oh wait, that was me. I guess Biff will just have to wait. You're mine, Biff Baffo. Mom! War is imminent and need money! Quick! War? Is that all? I was afraid it might be locusts or space invaders. You don't understand. I need to get the next issue of Biff Baffo and... Mona, I've already given you advances on your allowance for the next three months. Remember the fake blood and the musical yo-yo? But there's this ogre with fangs. You'll just have to learn to manage your money. <laughs> yes, but Biff Boffo doesn't run this household, does he? Mona? Never underestimate the untapped resources of old coat pockets. You've got Biff Buffalo fever too, huh? My parents won't let me have the next issue until Monday. Rats! I'm a dollar short, not counting the peso. On to plan B. We'll have enough if we return these bottles of pop, but we have to empty them first. We'll be late for school if we don't hurry. Hey, your desk is wobbly. Here, stick this library book under a leg. Oliver Twist, how'd you like it? It was, uh, magical. You haven't read it, have you? The report is due tomorrow. There's always time to start. I work best under pressure. Mona, have you been neglecting your homework? If you fail that report, there'll be no more comic books for the rest of the school year. But, Mom... Charlie, you shouldn't drink soda so early in the morning. I, I know, Mrs. Parker. <laughs> A dollar fifty. Good work, Charlie. It's closed. You're mine after school, Biff. Can we hurry? I really have to go to the bathroom. You should have gone before we left, Charlie. I did. Twice. children. Uh, I almost didn't make it. I don't want to even look at a soda for the rest of my life. Today I thought we could discuss Oliver Twist a little more. Mona, would you like to begin? Well, uh, it's still sinking in. As you can see, I'm almost done with my book report. I chose the illustrated medium because I think it lends itself best to the story. Is Oliver wearing a cape? And what's that on the schoolmaster? Tentacles. Green and slimy. Mona, since you obviously haven't read the book, you'll be staying after school to finish it. How does one capture the essence of Oliver Twist during lunchtime without having actually read it? 
The new librarian creeps me out. That's Miss Dewey. I heard she had a kid so scared that he tried to stifle his sneeze and his head blew up. And then she gave him detention. I heard it was a cough and that his eyeballs popped out. Mona, what? Your pen. Oh, rats. Just what I needed. Here, use a library pen. I have to get out of detention if I want to go to the comic book store. But I'll never finish my report by sticking to the classic. Thank goodness for the abridged version. Well, it's a report, all right, but there's an awful lot of white space. At least now I can return my book. This book is a week overdue. That'll be a dollar fifty. I'm saving my money for a comic book. Do you accept Lucky Marbles? A deadbeat, huh? You kids are all the same with your comic books. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be allowed anywhere near this place. I have to get back to class. Yeah, my bad buffo! What did you just say? I have other ways of collecting debts. You'll see. Good job, Biff. I told you the sonic disruptor would work. This is the best issue of Biff Boffo yet. Can I turn the page? No, wait, I'm not done. Mona, shouldn't you be working on that book report first? It's all done, Mom, like I promised. See? This isn't very funny, Mona. But I wrote it during lunch today. I swear! I told you, if you didn't turn in your report on time, no more comic books for the rest of the school year. Uh -huh. A promise is a promise. What happened to your report? It's the ogre who stole the peace treaty. That's just a comic book character, Mona. I know, but life imitates fiction. Miss Dewey said that she'd find a way to collect the debt. She must have stolen the words right off the page as payment. What are you gonna do? If I don't get my report back, my mom's gonna declare full-scale war. Just our luck. She's working overtime. We can't get in as long as she's there. Hey, I can't see her anymore. She's gone. I can't see her either. Let's come back later. She could leave with my book report. I can't take that chance. Come on. Where do we even begin to look? This could take hours. If only we had a hint. <laughs> Nothing beats a little Oliver Twist for supper. my book report, and now she's eating it! We need to distract her. Charlie, sing as loudly as you can. Hey, are you saying my singing is terrible? Not at all. She'll fall under the spell of your melodious voice and become as gentle as a kitten. Yeah, that's it. Well, that makes sense. Hmm, let's see. Oh, yeah! There's no talking, no laughing, and definitely no singing in the library! Yikes! Old McDonald has... Ah! Keep singing! I think she's softening up. Ouch! It's hot! Let's go! I think I ran her! What an ogre! Won't your children stay? I'd love to have you for supper! This book report is mine! You have no right to eat it! Oh, but I've got something much tastier than soup now! Comic books have turned you kids all soft and mushy! Comic books are what taught me exactly how to take care of ogres like you, lady! Ever heard of a sonic disruptor? Chips! You wouldn't dare! No! It's against the rules! 
We're putting an end to your rules. No eating! The knives! You'll ruin everything! Stop it right now! Well, I had to stay up all night, but it's done. I'll never wait until the last minute to do my homework again. At least this time it's done right. I've had my fill of ogres, both the comic book kind and the librarian kind. I don't think we'll see Miss Dewey ever again. They brought back the regular librarian. Good morning, class. I have good news and bad news. Oh, no. It's not good when she starts the day like that. A practical joker placed pens with disappearing ink in the library. Unfortunately, that's what I used to write my notes on Oliver Twist. So, the good news is you won't get your marks back right away. The bad news is that your reports are still due in today. So, hand them up to the front. Looks like Miss Gatto got tangled up with the ogre, too. Mona! Since you seem so eager to speak, why don't you share your views on the book with us? Certainly. But first, let me tell you about the valuable lesson the co- It's not old and out of fashion. It's part of the new expensive retro look. A 100% polyester power suit with wide lapels. A slightly flared inseam. And the pièce de résistance, a tie from the same era. A testament to fashion in a raw, unbridled state of anarchic conformity. I can't wait for the town picnic. My dad and I have been practicing for the crazy Olympics. I hope you practiced the backward real bower race. I'd hate to see Angela and her father win it again. For the fourth year in a row, she never stops bragging about it. Well, she won't have anything to brag about this year. My dad and I are going to win. What an ugly suit! Who'd buy that? Oh, yes! For a job selling vintage 70s cars, there is no finer garment than Carney Carlson's old polyester power suit! It's perfect. But is it affordable? Don't worry, I'll throw in the tie for free. When you strut out onto a used car lot, no customer will be able to take their eyes off you! Hiya, kids! Nice day, huh? The brake slipped. <laughs> well, I have a new part-time job, so I can afford a new garage door. It's... it's... That's right, it's Carney Carlson's original polyester power suit. Isn't it something? Well, you can't take your eyes off it. When I'm working at the used car lot, it'll really attract customers. We've got cars, vans, convertibles, and RVs. Come on down to Carney Carlson's used cars, where the customer is always the winner. Whoa, he's really wearing it. He's sure acting different. Hmm. Dad, can you help me with this math question? Sorry, you'll have to get Mom to help you tonight. I have to get to my new part-time job. See you later. <laughs> now listen to me, vampire girl. Stop bugging your dad about dumb things like homework, because now he belongs to me. Ah! Ah! Must get control. <laughs> Mona, clean this mess up. You're supposed to be doing your homework. This is starting to get serious. I had to fight the tie. Good thing your dad didn't buy a suit of armor with a sword and stuff. What are you gonna do? Just a warning, Miss Vampire. My dad and I are going to beat you and your father again this year at the backwards wheelbarrow race. I don't think so, Angela. After the way we beat you last year, I bet your father doesn't even show up. He will too show up. Huh. Are we still going bowling after school, even though your dad has that part-time job? Of course. My dad would never cancel bowling. He loves bowling. 
I'm really sorry, kids. I forgot all about the bowling. I have to work. That's okay, Dad. But you're going to make it to the town picnic on Saturday, right? We have to beat Angela and her father in the backwards wheelbarrow race. I don't know. I have to work that day. Your dad would never cancel a date with us to go bowling. I think the suit's taking over. We have to stop it. Thanks for letting us visit, Monsieur Murray. I was worried that you'd still be angry about us defeating you that time when you tried to take over the world with your mannequin army. We're all glad that you've given up on world domination. <clears throat> yes, about the polyester power suit. Well, it was a fashion statement that left its mark on the universe. And that particular suit belonged to Carney Carlson, the old owner of the used car lot. The used car lot? Now it's back where it began. We have to destroy the suit. It's not possible. It's made out of 100% polyester. It's virtually indestructible. Now this baby is the Iron Horse. Used to belong to a little old lady who drove it only on Sundays. It's a steal at twice the price. 10% down, 3% financing, 96 hour warranty on parts and labor. This is a car that was built to last. Don't worry, I won't charge you extra for the removable bumper feature, and I'll throw in a pine-scented air freshener. Deals, deals, deals at Carney Carlson's used car. The customer's always the winner. And if you're not, we'll throw in a free bus pass and a box of day-old donuts. Guaranteed. This car is very rare. It'll get you a lot of looks with the ladies, and I'm prepared to practically give it away. That's right, give it away. You're taking the shirt right off my back. That suit has to be destroyed. But I've got to get it when Dad isn't wearing it. Looking for me. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. I'm indestructible, invincible. Oh yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Mona? You're wrinkling your father's suit. And what are you doing up so late? That's all right. It's 100% polyester. Uh, I got up for a glass of water and the suit fell on me. Good night. Oh. I don't know, Fang. I don't think Dad will be going to the picnic with that suit around. Hey, honey, you better hurry up or you'll be late for school. Yeah. You're upset that I won't be going to the town picnic, aren't you? Yeah, kind of. Well, I got this job so we'd have some extra money so we could enjoy some of the finer things in life. We'll have to make a few sacrifices, but later we'll be glad we did. I understand, Dad. Come on, the suit's at home. When my dad goes to his day job, he wears his usual clothes. Then this is the perfect time to attack him. The town picnic's tomorrow. My father and I are looking forward to beating you and your father again at the backwards wheelbarrow race. That is, if you're not too chicken to show up. This is a job for Mona the Vampire, Zapman, and Princess Giant. Charlie, bring your Zapparama loaded with grape juice. Lily, bring your dad's supersonic stapler. You got it! Sure! Lily, you go through the back door. Charlie, you take the front. Fang and I will go through the window. How come I don't get to go through the window? Because I'm the vampire. Oh, right. Yoo-hoo, <laughs> anybody home? <laughs> Looking for me. You're surrounded. Just give up peacefully and we'll go easy on you. Eh, let's make a deal. An old-fashioned deal where we're all happy and we're all winners. Get him! <laughs> <laughs> No! I 
became indestructible, unbeatable, and polyester stretches like no other fabric. <laughs> Call me after the spin cycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm indestructible and completely stain resistant. <laughs> Staple it, Princess Giant! Uh, it won't go! There's a tag. It says, do not dry clean. Let me go! <laughs> Get in the... Bag! What are you doing to your father's suit? It was haunted, so we were going to destroy it. But it's your father's. Not anymore. I quit my part-time job. I realized that the finer things in life I wanted were just to spend more time with my family, including going to the town picnic tomorrow. Great! We better get this suit to the dry cleaners. Here's your father's suit, miss, cleaned to perfection. As for you, the good news is the one-hour cleaning is complete. The bad news is the suit's ruined. My dad just got a very lucrative part-time job that's going to make us richer than we are already. Well, see you tomorrow at the picnic, dweebs. Her dad isn't going to any picnic tomorrow. He's selling cars. Yeah! Yeah! Mona, your mother gave Lily and me five dollars to help out, not to be your lab rats. You're doing such a great job, Charlie. I just wanted to give you a break. Charlie, stop it! You're getting dust everywhere! Well, how else are we gonna get the floor clean? Hey, look! There's a drain. That gives me an idea. and wash the dirt down the drain. Uh, I think the water level's going up, not down. Wait, Charlie, turn it turn it uh. Oh, no! <laughs> the drain must be clogged. This should help. <laughs> What's down there anyway? I can almost feel the clog right here. Ouch! I pricked my finger on something. Is everything all right, kids? Should I come down? No, Mom. Don't water. I mean, don't worry. We're flooding fine. I mean, doing fine. We're doing fine. If she sees this, I'll be scrubbing the bathroom grow with a toothbrush. Yeah! Kids, lunch is ready. <laughs> what was that? Maybe you have mice. Yeah, that has to be it. But I think that this year, I can manage to sell the most cookies at school and win that brand new bike. Oh, yeah. I guess I should have warned you. My mother made me clean my room. It's like we're standing in the wrong house. I kind of like it. Each thing in its place. That's my new motto. Hey, did you clean up your closet, too? No, not the closet! Whoa! Who am I kidding? I'm not cut out for spring cleaning. How am I supposed to find anything in this, this order? My chaos had a system to it. It'll take at least three months to get back that lived-in look. 
Are those the school cookies? Do you think you'll manage to sell them all? <laughs> of course. They're delicious. And low fat, too. <coughs> Ugh. They taste worse than last year. I'm stuck with them. Kids, you left your soda pops on the kitchen table. I didn't take out soda pops. Did you? Not me. Whoever it is read my mind. Here's to our secret benefactor. Ah! More like a secret prankster, I'd say. <gasps> I'll investigate you tomorrow. I need sleep. I had to buy 24 donuts to get this free mug. Does anyone know how many sit-ups you need to do to burn off two dozen donuts? You sure are hungry for someone who had cookies for an appetizer. Cookies? Me? Oh, no. I was supposed to sell those for school. Dad? It wasn't me, honey. I still haven't digested the ones from last year. Did anyone see my car keys? I'm sure I left them on the table. Mona, didn't I ask you to clean out the basement yesterday? But we did, I swear. You're coming home straight from school and no TV until you do the work right. No mouse could make that mess. Everything was totally trashed and now I have to clean the basement all over by myself. Well, at least now the drain is unclogged. Yeah, the drain. You know, I was wondering about how you nicked your finger. It kind of looks like a bite mark. Exactly. So I did some research in my encyclopedia of beasties and boogies. Look what I found. A droll troll? The droll troll, prankster by nature, resides in caves and grottos, but has been known to establish residence in homes where it thrives in clutter, free to indulge in practical jokes. It must have come in through the drain yesterday. That would explain the soda pop, the broken mug, and the missing car keys. And this one craves school cookies. Did I hear someone mention cookies? You know, I've sold 20 boxes already. It looks like I'll break my own record from last year. It doesn't count if you get your own daddy to buy out the school stocks. We'll see when they give me that brand new bike. What a show off. I only sold one box and that was to my mother. Now she's putting cookies in my lunch. Yuck. We'll just feed them to Mona's Droll Troll. Don't kid. This is serious. Let me show you what a Droll Troll can do. The Freeman's house. I heard that they moved to Australia because of a Droll Troll infestation. They moved because of missing keys and broken dishes? That's only the start. Eventually, a Droll Troll will make your life miserable. The only way to get rid of them is to move away. That means your family might have to move, too. Hi, Dad. How was your day? Fine, aside from having to take the bus. You still haven't found your keys? No, and the spare keys are locked in the car. And now I can't find the TV remote. Meow. Fang, come here, you bad cat. Meow. Look what your cat did. He chewed up my Italian shoes. Fang wouldn't do that. He doesn't even like Italian. Well, it certainly wasn't gremlins or, or trolls. Hello? Hello? Why can't I hear? Oh, this is very annoying. Fang? Annoying? Oh, no. It's already begun. Dad? Would we ever move away? Right now, I'd move to Australia if that's where we left the remote. Where is that thing? I can't move to Australia. Summer is winter there. But why can't we do it during the day? Why pretend to sleep over? A droll troll is a nocturnal creature. We have to wait until it comes out on its own. And we can't let it catch us asleep. Uh, what? I'm awake, I'm awake. Oh, jeez, look at the time. We've been here all night. It'll be dawn soon. Maybe we should call it a night. Shh, listen. 
It must be the droll troll. Let me get my Tove bat shaker. I think I put it here. Or maybe it's over there. How am I supposed to find anything in here? I knew cleaning my room was a bad idea. We'll just have to do without it. Ready? coming from? Oh, no. It's an infestation. Quick, we have to catch them. Oh. Oh. They booby trapped the basement. I got one. They trapped me. Mona, help us. I can't see her. What have you out the troll center? Oh, I'm beginning to feel nauseous. Hey, trolls, how about a snack? I have delicious school cookies. That's right, and I know where to find plenty more. And it's been two days since anything's been missing at home. So I guess we're rid of the trolls once and for all. Your parents must be relieved. They thought a family of raccoons moved into our basement. They called animal control, but all they found was teeth marks. I wish you'd tell us where you took the trolls. Let's just say they have all the school cookies that they could possibly eat. They really love them. Hello, slackers. Look at what they gave me for selling the most cookies. It isn't nearly as nice as the bike my daddy bought for my birthday but it beats letting one of you have it. Ta-ta! Oh, rats! This kind of thing has been happening a lot in the past two days. I'm gonna tell her. Eventually, 